So let's start this rather tragic story with an interesting question. What does a rare Seiko, a limited edition of only 500, the first production spring drive, a really cool wristwatch, have to do with a package that really has nothing to do with it? Let's open it up and find out. You probably weren't expecting a pocket watch, but at least at this point, you can tell that they both have a Japanese origin. Watch time. You know I'm a pocket watch fan. Pocket watch time. I've got loads of pocket watches. I collect pocket watches. Welcome to another episode of Pocket Watch Time. My name is Patrick W. So let's get back into what these two watches have in common. This watch on my wrist is the SBWA001, a very limited production Seiko that is so limited most people don't even know about it. I purchased this watch last year and I made a video about it. If you want to learn more about the watch, check it out. So how does this wristwatch have anything to do with this pocket watch? Well, let me tell you a story. Well, after I got the watch, of course, one of the first things that I did was I posted a picture of it on Instagram. If you do a search on Instagram, you'll barely find any of these. It's such a rare watch, such an unknown watch, that pictures and tags of this watch are pretty uncommon. It turns out, actually, that one of the owners of this watch is Zach Blass, editor of Time and Tide. So at least I know there's one other guy out there with eclectic weird taste. So getting back to the story, one day I got a private message on my Instagram and it was another owner of the SBWA-001, and his name is Tyler. So Tyler told me a heart-wrenching story about finding one of his Grail watches, but he had a problem. His SBWA-001, well, it didn't fit his wrist. He found one of these exclusive models somewhere out there on the internet, but his copy didn't have enough links to fit his wrist, and so he was asking me if I had any extra links. And as it turns out, I did. If there's any other owners of this watch out there, save your email, I've given away all I can give. So I said, of course I'll send you a link. I can't imagine being in that situation of having a watch but not being able to wear it because there aren't enough links. And due to this watch's unique shape and size and its integrated bracelet, it's not like you can just wear a regular strap with it. So I'm not sure how long he owned this watch, but he hadn't been able to wear it yet. As I said, that's a heartbreaking story for a watch collector. So as it turns out, Tyler works in the watch industry and he asked me what I wanted for it. I'm pretty sure he offered me money at first, but I told him I didn't need any money for it. It really wasn't that kind of a thing. I really just wanted to help him out. But he insisted that I get something for it. And he went down a list of some cool things he had, and he showed me this Waltham pocket watch that actually had a Japanese dial. And I thought that was pretty cool. It turns out the watch wasn't running that well, so he said that he'd take it apart, lube it up, and see if he could get it running better. After a week or two, he said that he just couldn't get it to work right, and he was gonna give it to a watchmaker that he knew. So now the watch was gonna get a full service. That's pretty cool. So by now, he had received the link, I'd already sent it off to him. He sent me a couple pictures of him wearing it, and now, of course, he's one of the people who's posting it on his Instagram as well, really happy to be able to help him out. Watchmakers, of course, are not quick people. It took several weeks, it might even have taken a couple months, until finally the watch is ready to be shipped to me. And here's where the story starts to get tragic. So when I opened up the box, the watch was dead on arrival. I'm not sure what happened, but somewhere in shipping, the watch doesn't function anymore. Is it a broken balance staff? Probably. Is this movement worth getting fixed? Not really. So I'm just a little disappointed that all this effort was put into making this watch run and work well for it to just arrive to me dead. It's a reminder though, these classic pocket watches are fragile. So here's where the story gets even more tragic. So I then got the great idea that I was gonna salvage this dial and I was gonna put it on my own movement. It turns out that I actually have a 12 size bridge model movement one of Waltham's best movements, and this movement had already been modified so that it doesn't need and won't accept a second's hand. Sometimes you'll find hunter case movements that way, that way they can fit into an open face case. So now I've got a really high grade movement that I can put on this really cool dial, and my thought would that I'd put it on one of these exhibition cases. That would be an awesome everyday carry watch. A cool polarizing dial, an awesome movement, and with a display case you can even show it off and see it. So here's where I'm starting to think that this dial might be cursed. 
You can even see, while I'm moving this movement around, that the balance was functioning. I never touched the balance. I never messed with the balance. All I did was clean up the movement and put it into a new case. But lo and behold, now that I've got this really cool dial, put on this really cool movement, package it up in a really nice exhibition case, here comes the big reveal. Here I can hold it in the hand, I can spin it around, I can show you the beautiful dial, I can show you the beautiful case. I even do the standard let's wind it up and see if it'll run. Well after about 10 winds I notice it's not running. And I give it the old classic shake and it's still not running. I'm not exactly sure how it happened, but it looks like I've got a broken balance staff. So now I'm left with a conundrum. I've got this really cool dial, but every watch that it's touched, it's broken its balance staff. Is this dial cursed or just a bunch of bad coincidence? Let me know what you think in the comments. So what's the next step? I'll probably have to find a movement that's worthy of taking a gamble on. I'll have to see if I can unprove the curse of this dial. So thanks for watching this rather disappointing episode of Pocket Watch Time. Usually at the end of the episode, I like to show off a nice functioning watch. But sadly today, I just get to show you a pretty cool dial. But even though this trade didn't work out that well for me, at least I know Tyler gets to enjoy his SBWA001. And maybe that good karma will undo the curse of this Japanese dial. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe to Pocket Watch Time. Pocket Watch Time. I have lots of reviews on watches and on pocket watches. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.